Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids, and here I've got an Apple MacBook. It's a white 2010 unibody model. Now, as standard, these come with a 250 gigabyte hard drive and 2 gigabytes of RAM. Now, for the purpose of this review, I've already run a Geekbench uh, benchmark on the MacBook. It's on a fresh install of Mac OS 10.6, just to give you an idea of the performance. We've got a processor integer performance of 3322, floating point performance of 5101, memory performance of 2771, and memory bandwidth performance of 1933. An overall Geekbench score here of 3695. And for this video, I'm going to be actually installing a crucial technology. 256 gigabyte real SSD. This is a solid state drive. Now it's got some blistering performance. It's their latest C300 range. It's got a SATA interface, two and a half inch form factor, six gigabits per second. And if I just take you around the back of the box, we've got a maximum read speed of up to 355 megabytes per second and a maximum write speed of 215 megabytes per second. So let's take a closer look at the drive and then I'm going to walk you through how I install this into the Apple MacBook. So I've shut the MacBook down and turned it over and the first thing we need to do is actually remove the base of the MacBook and that's done by removing these eight screws on the base. So that's the base removed on the MacBook. So now we're ready to perform the SSD upgrade. So this is the Crucial Technology 256 gigabyte solid state drive. Now inside the box we've got some information about warranty. And in fact you get a three year limited warranty with this drive. So this is the drive itself. Just pop the package into one side. Now, the drive is very, very simple. It's a two and a half inch form factor. We've got some mounting screws on either side. And then we've got the interface for both the power and the data on the front here. So we've got to remove the existing drive from the MacBook. We've got two retaining screws here to remove first of all. Once they're removed, we're just removing this retaining plate from the laptop. And then we can ease up the hard drive. And then we've got the data cable here, which we have to remove. And we need to change over our screw bit on here. And we need, I think, it's a T7. Let's just try that for size. No, it's not a T7. It's going to be a T6 Torx bit. Let's have a look at the size of this one. This is a T6 Torx bit. And this is to remove these mounting screws on the side of the drive. So let's pop this into the screwdriver. So this is the existing hard drive and we're just going to remove these torque screws from the side. And these are used for remounting the SSD drive back into the MacBook. So that's one.
two. And then we repeat the other side. Three. And now we're going to put these mounting screws into the SSD drive. one two and repeat the other side A lot easier just to initially thread those onto the drive actually before you use the screwdriver. And then once those mounting screws are screwed into the drive, just check that one's in properly. And we can reconnect the power cable and the data cable to the drive, like so, and then lower this back in to position, and then we're going to replace this uh, holding bracket or retaining bracket back over the top, switch, switch screwdriver bits again. This is in the right position and then we're just going to screw these back down. Careful not to over tighten these screws as well. So that's the solid state drive into place and now we're in a position to put the base back onto the MacBook. So I just wanted to also share with you how I'm going to get the Mac operating system back onto the new SSD drive. Now, normally I would do a full install from the DVDs, but I've got a fresh install on this hard drive that I just removed from the MacBook. Now, this device here, I have reviewed this on the channel. This is a Freecom Hard Drive Dock Pro. It allows you to dock SATA hard drives, either 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch. It connects via USB, and I've pop that old drive in there and I've rebooted my Mac from this drive so the OS you're seeing running here is actually running from this drive now the SSD needs formatting so I'm going to start up disk utility now it does show here as two uh, different partitions the system reserved portion is really just for Windows based systems as far as I know so I'm going to get rid of that so I'm going to highlight uh, this main drive up here and go to partition and I'm going to select one partition so I've got one large partition and I'm going to call that uh, Mac just MacBook again in options I'm also going to make sure that it's GUID partition table 
because I'm only ever going to use this on a Mac. So we're going to click apply and then on partition and hopefully that should do the job. It should change it here to GUID partition table. We've got large 255 gigabytes of usable space so that's really good. So I'm going to quit out of that and the application I'm going to use for the cloning is super duper. I've used this for a long long time and it's just simply cloned from one drive to another. Now I've got MacBook, the one with the little orange icon and it's also depicted with an icon for USB so I know that's this drive and I'm going to copy from that and I'm going to copy it to MacBook. I'm going to back up all files. If I give you a quick look in options there's not a lot to change here. You can repair par uh, permissions first if you want. You can erase again but I've already just done that and do nothing on completion. Nothing to change in advanced. But I, I will show you in advanced. If I go into advanced we've got things for running shell scripts, doing things during copy and what to do after the copy as well. But again I'll just, just to reiterate I'm not going to change anything there. And then it's just a simple matter of clicking copy now. It's asking for my password. So that's my password in and now I'm going to click OK and it's just warning me I'm going to actually erase everything on MacBook and is that OK? So I'm going to say yes that's OK and go ahead with the copy. So I'm going to pause the video now and I'll come back to you with the performance results after I've cloned the operating system back onto the new solid state drive. So that's the Crucial Technology SSD installed and I've also cloned Mac OS X back over to the new drive. And as you can see we've got 255.72 gigabytes capacity available there. And I've also got my Geekbench scores down here, the before and also the after. And as you can see the processor integer performance has gone up from 3322 to 3353. The floating point performance 5101 that's gone up to 5160 and the overall Geekbench score has gone up from 3695 to 3744. Now with this new solid state drive installed in the MacBook it runs absolutely silently a lot quicker start up times and it should also improve battery life. A big big thank you to Crucial Technology for supplying me their real SSD drive it's model number C300 it's available in all different capacities and the one that you saw me install in this video was a 256 gigabyte version. Well thanks very much for listening. If you want to keep up to date with all my future videos please subscribe to the Geekanoids channel. And if you want my regular updates on Twitter please follow at Geekanoids. Until next time, have a great day. This video is sponsored by MyMemory.com. For great prices, fast delivery and reliable customer support... Visit mymemory.com.